Hello guys, welcome to Football Fandom UK. Hope you're having a fantastic weekend. Um, I'm just bringing you a, an update with regards to Bolton. Um, hope you are having a cracking weekend. As I say, if you are new to the channel or even if you're not and you've watched a few videos before, if you're liking what you're seeing, it'd be very much appreciated if you like, share and subscribe. Thanks a lot guys. Um, so yeah, just going to do a quick video for obviously Bolton fans um, with regards to our club and the state of affairs. No news coming out of the club. You've all probably been checking for yourselves. I know I've been checking regularly, um, but obviously there's nothing coming out, which is very frustrating for all of us as fans. Unfortunately, again today, Bolton lost 5-0. That's the third game in a row. That's not good. Obviously, we cannot blame the young, lad, young lads playing for us. They're doing everything they can. But they're not professional players, are they? So, you know, the, what the club is asking them to, to do and achieve is, is, you know, way beyond what they should be doing at this stage of their development. <clears throat> and obviously, as a fan... I am concerned if it does have a, a detrimental impact on these young lads uh, in the future. Um, but hopefully it won't. Hopefully it'll all be good experience for them. And hopefully we may actually see them uh, develop into some cracking players. But at this moment in time, guys, it's a lot to ask. And, you know, at today the fans were brilliant again at the ground. Lots of noise, showing their support, trying to get behind the players as best possible. Um, but obviously, it's very difficult to get behind the team when you're losing 5-0 on a regular basis. Um, I didn't manage to get to the game myself today. I managed to listen to it on the radio while I was uh, doing other things, unfortunately. Uh, but one thing I did notice that the commentators were very critical of the EFL, which was great to hear uh, that obviously professional pundits were criticising the EFL because I think it's very much deserved. And I'm sure you guys do as well. Uh, for letting this situation with ourselves as a club and obviously bury down the road, uh, escalate to the, the extent of what it has. And obviously the pundits on the radio were asking the question, should Bolton even be played? Should they be, you know, should they have been allowed to start the season with uh, without having a professional team? Um, and obviously we didn't want, we don't want to not have to start the season. But the reason that the guys on the radio station were bringing this particular t topic up or dispute, uh, discussing it, shall I say, um, was because they were saying that if we hadn't started the season and we'd been forced into a similar situation as Bury. Would that have meant that the, the, the administrators pulled their finger out and got this deal done faster? Um, because obviously we know the court case held things up um, and obviously that wasn't good. And that was a bit beyond the control of the administrators. But, you know, they've had a week and a half. And before that court case, we were getting told that things were close. You know, it was imminent uh, that the club was going to get sold and transferred over to the new owners. And yet still we are a week or so after the court case and still no owners, still no information. So guys, I've got what little information I can bring to you. Um, some of it is revolving around uh, Bassini and obviously uh, Anderson. Um, I'll go through that quickly first because obviously I want to get that out of the way because them guys are no longer involved in the club, thank God. Um, but yeah, um, so Bassini has uh, obviously claimed... Uh, that he only paid a pound for the transfer of shares um, from Anderson. Um, so I'm not sure if that mean, means he just paid a pound for the transfer of the shares or he actually paid a pound to buy the club off of Anderson. Um, I need to look into that further. Uh, the information was very sketchy on that. But either way, it, it brings this question up again, doesn't it? What the hell is going on when clubs are getting passed over, you know, for stupid, pathetic amounts of money as a pound. Same thing with Bury's owner, supposedly buying a club for a pound and now he wants an arm and a leg for Bury Football Club. You know, it's the question's got to be asked, why are our clubs being treated with this sort of disregard where, the, you know, transfer buying a club can come down to a pound? 
you know, whether it's for transfer of papers or whatever, if you go and have a solicitor's letter made for whatever reason, you'll have to pay hundreds of pounds for it. So why is the transfer of paperwork, even if he's only paying tra a pound for the transfer of paperwork, why is it so little? That, that's got to bring up question marks straight away that, you know, such little money is being handed over involving a club uh, like the size of, of, of ours, you know. I mean, we're not the biggest club in the country but by far, are we? But we're still a, a big-ish club and we are a founding member of the Football League, which should command a certain amount of respect from any potential owners. So, yeah, guys, that got me uh, a bit frustrated to yet again here that, you know, whether it's buying the club or transferring paperwork for a pound... It's a stupid figure. It's crazy. You can't buy a bloody football ticket for a pound. So why is paperwork or a club being sold for a pound? It's madness. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's what Bassini has claimed. Um, also, that he's then claiming that Anderson then moved the goalposts and uh, after they'd agreed this and then started demanding five million um, for, for the club. Um, that he wanted to walk away with or, or he wanted for the club. Um, so basically, um, the, the, the situation between them two, we can see why it's, uh, you know, ended up in court. That's starting to give us some explanation to why they ended up dragging Bolton into the court just for them to arguing about the amount of money. Um, Anderson has claimed uh, Bassini failed the EFL approval, uh, approval uh, ownership test hence why he wasn't able to buy the club. Um, so, yeah, it's basically tit for tat between them two, isn't it, over, over money. You know, our club suffers, you know, going, uh, uh, you know, three and a half years, guys. Three and a half years we've been seeing our club suffer and yet we're still seeing it and we have to come down to stupid stuff like this where, where these two idiots are arguing over money and, and you know, can't be you know, grown up and adult, that's the thing it boils down to, guys, being adult enough to do a deal and, and you know, deal with it as adults instead of tit for tat about how much money, you know, there should, should be no tit for tat. They either sell the club or they don't sell the club. But to be quite honest, guys, I, I'm not really that interested. I've only bought you that, brought you that information so that you guys, as, as I do, now know why... Um, or at least have some idea to some of the reason why these two decided, or at least Bassini decided to take Bolton to court. Um, I think it's sour grapes because he didn't get the club, but I think it's also the fact that, you know, him and Anderson have had, uh, you know, an, a disagreement over the amount of money that they, uh, they, they sell the club for, buy the club for, whatever. But that's the reason, obviously, why them two have obviously ended up in court against each other. And we, as fans uh, and our club, got caught up in the middle of it. But let's hope that, that we don't get dragged into it any further and it stays between them two. Um, so, yeah, guys, but obviously things still not improving with the club. Uh, no season tickets sold. Uh, no sponsorship deal done. No manager in place and no wages paid still. So, you know, that, that speaks all I need to say, guys. We're still in the same situation we were a couple of months ago. Some wages have been paid to players, but as I understand it, and I might be getting this wrong, but from the information that I've managed to research, it looks like the reason the players got some money was because of a loan, which I did mention in a previous video from the PFA, which is a players, football, uh, players association, football association, whatever they're called. Uh, but basically, the PFA loaned Bolton some money to pay uh, wages or some wages to players. Um, and that is why the players have had some money and not all. Um, so basically, we're still waiting for either, you know, previous owner or new owner to come to put their hand in the pockets and start paying uh, our players and our staff some wages. Um, I don't understand how the, the, the tickets are being sold. Where's that money going? You know, I'm presuming that the administrators are getting control of that money. So if that's the case, why are they not using that money to at least give the players and the staff some sort of income? Um, like I said, guys, I'm not 100% sure to exactly how this, this is developed or is developing with regards to wages. But as I understand it, reports that I found today whilst I was doing research is there is still no wages being paid to players or staff. 
which is an absolute disgrace because that means that this has now been going on for about six months with our but that's half a year guys half a year our players and staff are expected to manage when they've got families and and you know mortgages to pay and whatever else that cars you know finance whatever they've got bills to pay just like we have and they're expected to go half a year without any money it's an absolute disgrace and the EFL, that they have got to be answerable as well because I don't know how you guys listen to the radio, whether you listened to the radio, went to the match or whatever you did today to find out obviously how Bolton were getting on. Um, but I know when I was listening to the radio, they was very critical of the EFL and I thought that was absolutely awesome to hear professional pundits um, absolutely, you know, giving it some serious criticism uh, with regards to the EFL, which is well deserved. Obviously, I've been criticising them, but I am not no professional, guys. I'm just, you know, me trying to make a, a YouTube channel for fans um, from a fan's point of view. So to hear professional pundits criticising the EFL was rather refreshing and very, very much deserved. Um, so, yeah. Obviously, uh, Phil Parkinson has resigned, which most of you are probably well aware of. Um, and we have got Jimmy Phillips in temporary charge. Uh, there's been a number of uh, managers linked with the position. I believe one of them is our, uh, Kevin Nolan, one of our previous players. And I would be very much uh, in support of Kevin Nolan being a manager of Bolton at some point. But I don't think that this is the right time. We've seen experienced managers like Neil Lennon and obviously Phil Parkinson come in to Bolton and have a tough time because of the state of the club. So is it really a great idea to give a young up-and-coming manager like Kevin Noland, uh, you know, the job at Bolton when he may face similar circumstances? Let's hope whatever manager does come in, they don't face the same circumstances as Neil Lennon and Phil Parkinson. But I'm just throwing it out there, guys, because I believe in being honest and realistic about things. And we've got to be honest, you know, at the minute, until we get these owners, you know, potentially buying the club and see what their intentions are, we have to fear that, you know, we could go uh, along a similar path to what we've just gone on. And hopefully that won't be the case. But I'm just pointing it out because I don't think if we are going to be in that situation, I don't think that Kevin Noland is the right man for the job. I've nothing against him. I hope that one day he does manage Bolton. But with obviously the state of affairs with the club at the minute, I just think he's too inexperienced. I'd love to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments. But me personally, I think he has not got the experience to take on a club the size of Bolton. At this present moment with our situation, I think it would be too much to ask of him. As we say, we've just seen Phil Parkinson walk away, basically. And I think the reason why he's walked away is because he is absolutely worn out with the whole situation. He's been given no transfer budgets during the time he's managed the club. He's had to face transfer restrictions uh, on, on a couple of occasions because of the state of the club. Um, so, you know, as, as far as I'm concerned, I know there has been some criticism labelled at him for a few results and uh, and obviously individual resu resu uh, results. If it's deserved criticism, fair play. But overall, I think he's done the best he possibly could have done in the circumstances that he was placed in and I wish him the best for the future. Um, obviously, I'm not happy that he has chose to resign. But you can't play. You can't blame the guy when he's, you know, he's tried to stick it out. He's tried to, you know, uh, guide Bolton into a better situation. But as long as he is not getting the backing from the board and from any owners that are in place, it, any manager, even Jose Mourinho, would find it tough in them circumstances. So yeah, wishing Phil Parkinson the best of luck for the future, and hopefully he will join a club that is in a, a you know, gives him the opportunity to to uh, repair uh, some of his credibility. Um, not that, in my opinion, it has been damaged that much because anybody that knows about football will know that, you know, what, what he's had to face was beyond his control, uh, as it is our control as well. Us as fans suffer the same way. We, you know, we cannot... It's not it's beyond our control when these crazy owners are allowed to take control of our club and make such a mess of it. So, yeah, guys... 
Uh, under 5,000 people, uh, under 5,000 fans uh, in the ground today, over 5,000 people, um, which included 700 Ipswich fans, but under 5,000 Bolton fans. And I have nothing but uh, respect for the Bolton fans. And obviously, you guys know I'm a Bolton fan myself. I didn't manage to get to the game today. But to be quite honest, why, why should any fan be expected to go to a game where we know there's a damn good chance our team are going to lose? We want to get behind the players, but when we're getting charged £20 a ticket and we have, what, three, four you know, professional players on the pitch, no disrespect to the young lads that have been doing what they're doing for us. They're giving it everything, but these guys are not fully developed yet and they're not obviously experienced enough to deal with the pressure and the expectation that is, is of obviously put on, on the uh, first team as a club in normal circumstances. So my hat comes off to the young players for giving absolutely everything they possibly can. But as I say, uh, in my opinion, what's being expected of them is way beyond what they should be experiencing at this stage of their development. But... As fans, all of us, I think 99% of fans have been very supportive of the young players and are realistic. You guys, and I'm certainly aware that, you know, we cannot put too much expectation on these young players. All we can do is hope that they go out and give us everything, which I believe they've been trying to do. But obviously, as I say, they're not experienced enough to deal with uh, the top, top level of football. Uh, we might be in Division 1. But we've been in it before and we know that you have to show respect to the teams that are in this division because every team is going to give you a game. It don't matter whether they've got 5,000 fans or they've only got 100 fans. If they're in League One, they are going to fight tooth and nail to get points. And we know that because we've been there before, haven't we, guys? We've been in this league before. We know what it takes to get out of it. Um, so yeah, I, I, as I say, it's a, it's a, it's a shame to see these young players having so much responsibility put on their shoulders. Uh, but I think they're doing awesome. I think they're giving it everything, and hopefully um, that we will see that they get some points for their efforts uh, in the next couple of games. So yeah, guys, that's about all I've got to uh, bring you today. As I say, I'm personally pretty disgusted with the administrators trying to charge, well, not trying, they were charging £20 a ticket for today's game, which is obviously, you know, not right when, you know, you could add the parking charges and stuff in the ground. And we know, you know, we want to believe, of course we do, as fans we want to believe, but we know there's a damn good chance that we are going to get a defeat uh, in the circumstances what our club is in. So, yeah, guys, pretty much that's all of it. One more thing um, we uh, is with regards to our uh, postponement of the Doncaster game, and that is that we could face further points deduction for postponing that game, um, which will not help the situation at all. And, obviously, it just angers me more in respect of the EFL. They're an absolute disgrace. You know, they're not helping us. They're not helping Bury. They not. They never seem to help any club in this situation. They just talk the talk, but don't walk the walk. And they need to take a long, hard look at themselves. Because as fans, we have to ask the question, if these people are not competent enough to do the job and help the football league, the pyramid, uh, develop for all clubs fairly, then they shouldn't be doing the job. It's as simple as that, in my opinion. And I know I'm no expert, no professional, but I know what I see. And I see a load of people that are basically running English football and they do nothing to help clubs in the sort of situation we've found our club and the sort of situation that Bury found their club. So, yeah, guys, I don't want to get into it too much criticising the EFL today. I don't even want to criticise the EFL at all, but they, they need it. They really do need it. And and, the, and obviously, in future videos, I probably be, will be criticising criti criticizing them. Um, not because I want to, but because they deserve it. Because, as I say, they, they, they're showing their level of incompetence at doing their job. They spent all summer making loads of daft rules to it introduced to the game about you know goal line technology goal line uh, penalty taken keeper's got to keep his foot on the on the on the line all sorts of crazy rules handball rules they've, they've introduced a fair few new rules rules this season 
Why are they wasting the time? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's my opinion, guys. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And the, and the football that we watch have been going on for 100 years or more. So why are they tampering with something that ain't broke? You know, we need clarity. Of course we need clarity. But we don't need them just messing about with the, the game just for the sake of messing about with it when they could be actually spending that time uh, a lot more uh, significantly in respect of introducing new rules to protect clubs from crazy owners that are in it for themselves. And I've got to say that, guys. I have to say that because I think it's needed. But as I say, criticism for the AFL on a, on a, on a, you know, in a more, shall we say, um, pronounced uh, way, shall I? I'm not sure if I'm getting that right. Uh, but yeah, I think in the future, at some point, I probably will do a video criticising the AFL because I think they deserve it. Uh, but yeah, guys, I've brought you up to scratch with pretty much everything I can. Um, if there is any more info, I will definitely do another video. Um, but hopefully, guys, that has brought you up to scratch. Uh, as I say, not a lot to talk about because we ain't hearing nothing out of the club. Um, and hopefully these administrators will get their finger out and get this deal done so that we can actually start enjoying a football again as a as, as a football club and obviously as a football family, which obviously as what I consider all Bolton fans. Take care for now, guys. Hopefully you join me on the next video. Look after yourself and I'll see you soon. Bye.